Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Bytel. Today's topic of discussion is the Transformer Open Circuit and Short Circuit Test. Our objective is to introduce both the Transformer Open Circuit or No Load Test and the Short Circuit Test. We'll learn how to conduct these tests and how to interpret the results. Recall in the Non-Ideal Transformers lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel, we introduced progressively more complex depictions of real-world transformers accounted for copper and iron losses, as well as magnetizing or excitation current. As difficult as that lecture might have seemed, these models were only part of the picture, and much, much more complicated and accurate depictions of transformers exist that account for other nonlinearities, including, but not limited to, series inductive losses and capacitive coupling between the primary and secondary windings and between the windings themselves. You'll be glad to know that only in the most extreme of occasions does one need to go to this level of detail, and often simpler models will suffice. Two field expedient means of testing a given transformer and accounting for these non-ideal effects exists, the open circuit test and the short circuit test. The open circuit or no load test is defined to quantify the parallel impedance component of the transformer equivalent circuit, whereas the short circuit test is designed to quantify the series impedance component of the transformer equivalent circuit. Field expedient, by the way, means an action that can be quickly performed in the field without the need of special apparatus. Often these tests are performed to quickly ascertain the series and parallel impedance components of a transformer equivalent circuit without worrying about divvying them up into copper losses on the primary, copper losses on the secondary, eddy current losses, hysteresis losses, etc, etc, etc. When you get right down to it, all you need is a parallel impedance and a series impedance for the transformer equivalent circuit. Let's examine the open circuit or no load test first. This one's pretty easy. As the name implies, this test is performed with an open circuit or no load on the secondary winding such that no current flows through the secondary winding. The open circuit test necessitates a voltmeter and an ammeter be placed on the primary, or a wattmeter if you're super fancy, and then the rated voltage is applied to the primary. A small excitation or magnetizing current will flow in the primary where the magnitude of this current is reflective of an imagined parallel impedance accounting for both hysteresis and eddy currents inside the transformer equivalent circuit. You note when the secondary winding is open circuited, the reflected impedance seen by the source would be infinite, and current would only travel through the parallel impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit. Given voltage and current readings, one can easily determine the magnitude of this parallel impedance as well as the apparent real and reactive power consumed by it. Consider a 5 to 1 step down transformer designed to operate at 60 Hz AC with the following specifications 120 volt rated voltage and a 1 amp rated current for a total rating of 120 volt amperes. Using the primary to secondary turns ratio, it can be demonstrated that the secondary would produce 24 volts out. This means the secondary is capable of carrying 5 amps of current for a power rating of 120 volt amps. When the rated voltage of 120 volts is applied to the primary and the secondary winding is open circuited, Let's say the ammeter on the primary experiences 200 mA current and current appears to lag voltage by 70 degrees. Keep in mind, no current is flowing in the secondary and no power is being transferred to any load. This is the vampire leakage current I spoke about in the non-ideal transformers lecture. Any power consumed by this unloaded transformer is going to waste. An application of AC Ohm's law demonstrates the parallel impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit is 600 ohms at an angle of 70 degrees. Which portion of this parallel impedance accounts for hysteresis? which accounts for eddy currents. We don't know. We don't care. All of these factors and more are rolled up in one quantifiable property inside the transformer equivalent circuit. A subsequent application of the AC power formula demonstrates the parallel impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit at the rated voltage experiences 24 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 8.2 watts is directed towards real power and 22.6 VARs is directed towards a reactive interchange. You will note that the 8.2 watts of real power consumed by the parallel impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit, again, is not being directed towards useful output, would be considered a loss to this system. In summary, to perform the open circuit or no load test on a transformer, one opens the secondary, applies the rated voltage to the primary, and measures current flowing in the primary. The impedance, apparent, real, and reactive power consumed by the parallel impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit can then be calculated by an individual well-versed in AC Ohm's law and power calculations. Let's now take a look at the transformer short circuit test. Pay attention because bad things can happen if you screw this one up. This is not a task for the simple minded or for those that cannot read and follow instructions. It is for this reason I'm asking that you make sure your lazy lab partner is conveniently absent when you do this in lab. Put him in a round room and tell him to pee in a corner. This should keep him busy for a while. As the name implies, this test is performed with a short circuit on the secondary windings. Then, voltage on the primary is ramped 
up from zero using a variable AC voltage source until the rated current is flowing in the primary. I say again, voltage on the primary is ramped up from zero until the rated current is flowing in the primary. Do not apply the rated voltage to the primary with a short circuit on the secondary. You will destroy the transformer and everything in close proximity. One must use a variable voltage source. Start at zero volts and slowly ramp it up until you observe rated current on the primary. Similar to the open circuit test, the short circuit test necessitates a voltmeter and ammeter be placed on the primary and these instruments must be monitored at all times to ensure rated current is not exceeded. With a short circuit on the secondary, substantial current will flow on the primary, even at extremely low voltages. Ultimately, the magnitude of the applied voltage is reflective of an imagined series of impedance accounting for the copper losses in both the primary and secondary windings inside the transformer equivalent circuit, among other effects. Given voltage and current readings, one can then easily determine the magnitude of this series impedance as well as the apparent real and reactive power experienced by it. You will note that when the secondary winding is short-circuited, the reflected impedance seen by the source would be very small, consisting of only the reflective impedance of the secondary windings. Given applied voltage will be small for a short circuit test, we're assuming no current will travel through the parallel impedance and all current will be confined to the series impedance path. We know this isn't really true. However, in the interest of expediency, we'll assume it is. Again, consider a 5 to 1 step down transformer designed to operate at 60 Hz AC with the following specifications 120 volts rated voltage, 1 amp rated current for a rated apparent power of 120 volt amperes. As previously, using the primary to secondary turns ratio, it can be demonstrated that the secondary would produce 24 volt output. This means the secondary is capable of carrying 5 amps of current for a power rating of 120 volt amperes. To conduct the short circuit test, one would short circuit the secondary winding by tying X1 and X2 together. The variable voltage source on the primary starts at 0 volts and is slowly ramped up until the ammeter demonstrates the rated current is flowing in the primary, in this case 1 amp. Anything more than 1 amp might destroy the transformer. Let's say this necessitates only the application of 7 volts to the primary, such that the ammeter experiences 1 amp of current in the primary. Let's say the current appears to slightly lag voltage by let's say 10 degrees. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates the series impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit is 7 ohms at an angle of 10 degrees. Which portion of this series impedance accounts for primary copper losses, which for secondary copper losses, which for inductive effects? We don't know. We don't care. All of these factors and more are ruled up into one quantifiable property for the transformer equivalent circuit. A subsequent application of the AC power formula demonstrates the series impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit experiences 7 volt amps of apparent power, of which 6.9 watts is directed towards real power and 1.2 bars is directed towards a reactive interchange. You will again note that 6.9 watts of real power consumed by the series impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit is not being directed towards useful output and will be considered a loss to this system. In summary, to perform the short circuit test on a transformer, one short circuits the secondary, then slowly ramps voltage applied to the primary from zero up until the rated current flows in the primary. This ordinarily requires a very small voltage and this test must be conducted with utmost care and vigilance. The impedance, apparent, real and reactive power consumed by the series impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit can then be calculated by an individual well versed in AC Ohm's law and power calculations. Finally, the results of the open and short circuit test can be combined into a field expedient model of the transformer under inspection. Sure, it's not as accurate and as sexy as the experimentally determined model in an expensive lab, but it gets the job done at a minimum cost and effort. Our representative 5 to 1 step down transformer equivalent circuit includes a parallel impedance of 600 ohms at an angle of 70 degrees and a series impedance of 7 ohms at an angle of 10 degrees and an ideal 5 to 1 step down transformer. This simple model can then be used to calculate the electrical properties for this system for a range of electrical loads. What's nice about this model is that we calculated these values at rated conditions, i.e. when the parallel impedance experiences a rated voltage and when the series impedance experiences the rated current. Whenever this transformer is being used as it's intended, i.e. at the rated condition, we can be confident that 8.2 watts plus 6.9 watts, roughly 15.1 watts will be directed towards losses. These kind of serve as the upper limits of what you might observe. At other than the rated conditions, we can use this model obtained by the open and short circuit test to predict the behavior of this system. As a parting exercise to the viewer, see if you can determine the electrical properties of the load and the efficiency of this system given the electrical load on the secondary is modeled as an impedance of 6 ohms at an angle of 20 degrees. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, 
you should have obtained the following values. The reflected impedance seen by the primary winding is the turns ratio squared times the load impedance. Substituting in our given values demonstrates the reflected impedance equals 150 ohms at an angle of 20 degrees. The voltage across the parallel impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit is 120 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. As such, it still draws 200 milliampers of current at an angle of 70 degrees. As previously, the parallel impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit experiences 24 volt amps of apparent power, of which 8.2 watts is directed towards real power and 22.6 vars is directed towards the reactive interchange. You'll note that the reflected impedance is in series with the series impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit. This is a perfect setup for the AC voltage divider rule. An application of the AC voltage divider rule demonstrates the reflected impedance experiences a voltage drop of 114.7 volts at an angle of 0.4 degrees. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates the reflected impedance draws 764.8 mA of current at an angle of negative 19.6 degrees. Current through elements in series is the same. The series impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit experiences this same current draw. An application of the AC power formula where apparent power is equal to current squared times the impedance complex conjugate demonstrates that the series impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit experiences 4.1 volt amperes of apparent power of which 4 watts is directed towards real power and 711 millivars is directed towards a reactive interchange. You'll note that since the transformer is experiencing less than the rate of current, the power consumed by the series impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit is less than we observed at the rated condition of 1 amp. In regards to the source, it supplies 200 milliamps of current at an angle of negative 70 degrees to the parallel impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit, plus 764.8 milliamps of current at an angle of negative 19.6 degrees to the reflected impedance path for a total current draw of 905.4 milliamps at an angle of negative 29.4 degrees. An application of the AC power formula demonstrates the source provides 108.7 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 94.7 watts is directed towards real power and 53.3 vars is directed towards a reactive interchange. In regards to the actual load, it experiences one-fifth of the voltage drop across the reflected impedance, or 22.9 volts at an angle of 0.4 degrees. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates the load experiences 3.8 amps of current at an angle of negative 19.6 degrees. You will note this is roughly five times the current experienced by the reflected impedance. An application of the AC power equation demonstrates the load experiences 87.7 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 82.5 watts is directed towards real power and roughly 30 vars is directed towards a reactive interchange. In regards to efficiency, of the 94.7 watts of real power delivered by the source, 82.5 watts is directed towards useful output by the load and 8.2 watts plus 4 watts or roughly 12.2 watts is directed towards losses. In totality, this represents an efficiency of roughly 87.1%. You will again note that the power consumed by the parallel impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit doesn't deviate at all from the rated conditions, whereas power consumed by the series impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit drops less power than the rated conditions because we're not at the rated conditions. This is ultimately a function of load demands. The short circuit test basically gives you an upper limit of what you might expect to observe at the rated conditions. Additionally, you will note it takes 22.6 plus 711 millivars or roughly 23.3 vars of reactive power just to get the transformer to work. All right, that's about it for today. In conclusion, this lecture examined the open circuit or no load test and the short circuit test for transformers. We learned the results of the open circuit test can be used to determine the properties of a parallel impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit that accounts for eddy currents and hysteresis losses. Similarly, we learned the results of the short circuit test can be used to determine the properties of a series impedance inside the transformer equivalent circuit that accounts for copper losses and inductive effects in the primary and secondary windings. Finally, we learned the short circuit test must be performed with care and vigilance and is not to be attempted by dummies unaccustomed to electrical instrumentation. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.